Welcome back to DIY or Die, and today we're going to learn how to safely use a neon sign transformer. So, right now I just have it in, uh, you, you guys have probably seen this if you like high voltage. You just take two wires here, and it's called a Jacob's Ladder, and they, the potential between the two uh, ends of the transformer here just makes the electric, electric current arc between the two wires, and then you get plasma. And because plasma's hot, uh, hot air rises, same as plasma, and it just moves up the ladder, so to speak. You have to be very careful if you're going to do something like this with a, uh, a neon sign. You have to make sure that those terminals there on both sides, uh, uh, you have to make sure the bolts are very tight because if this wire was to fall on me, I would get quite a uh, quite funny shock from that. This is a um, or this. This is a 15,000 volts. Uh, I believe it's 30. Yeah, 30 milliamp. Yeah, I'll see if we can get this for you guys here. There we go. 15,000 volt, 30 milliamp neon sign transformer. So it's this is the h highest voltage they come in, and I, unless there's some really high end industrial one. You can get them in 60 milliamp versions, and I, I have heard of like huge 300 milliamp ones, but those you'll never find. So basically, these things are set up like any typical high voltage transformer. You, uh, you have two, you have your one end of the transformer, and then your other end here. So you got, uh, and then the, the center, it's got a center point ground. So, so basically, from here to here, you have 7.5 kilovolts. From here to here, you have 7.5. And then because these are 180 degrees out of phase, both these give you 15 kilovolts between these two. So because these are these are each referenced to ground, uh, each of these will give you 7 kilovolts to ground, which means if you touch it, you'll get a nice 7.5 kilovolt shock. So do not do that. You have to keep that in mind. Uh, another thing you have to keep in mind, if you're going to look at one of the, getting one of these for like a, a Jacob's Ladder or even a, most people buy these for Tesla coils. Uh, see, even this one had a uh, GFI circuit on there, or GF, yeah, uh, yeah, no, ground fault, yeah, GFCI circuit had it on there. So, a lot of the modern ones are junk, like the new, new ones, those are inverter, high frequency switching type base supplies, and you don't want to get those, you want to get a nice, this thing is like, it's probably 40 pounds, just really heavy, nice transformers, you can run them all day like this and they'll never ever break. But uh, you want to make sure, I mean, these connections aren't the greatest really, to be honest, but make sure what's the most important is this, your your ground connection, because if you run this without the ground, uh, it'll probably arc over and, yeah, it's not very good if you don't run that without ground. This whole frame would become, uh, it would probably become live with some sort of electricity. I'm not sure the type of potential that would be there, but... Uh, yeah, here I'll plug it in here and I'll show you. Because it is grounded and because the case is grounded, I can touch this no problem while well, it's on. Just don't touch those. And uh, that's, that's all there is to it, really. Now the jump here, that's, that's quite a big jump there. I'll actually, I'll take these off here and I'll be back with just some bare wires and a chicken stick to show you the arcs you can get out of this thing. This can arc to any lower voltage source, even mains, so don't get it near that. So, uh, here's the one side I'm on, right here, that one. And as you can see, if I bring it near the frame or the case, you get the 7.5 kilovolts. And I could also be touching this while I was arcing to it. I just can't show you that because I don't have three hands, but... So yeah, there's that, and then this is where you get the, you can even hear it, nice crackle. So it does actually give you, well one, it gives you good voltage, but the current's not that bad. You don't even need glasses or anything, and uh, it's just, just enough to give you a nice little arc here to play around with. Probably won't gonna, it's probably not going to kill you either if you, if you get shocked. 
Especially if it's just the one hand, but if it's two, yeah, you might die. I don't know. These things are pretty, pretty foolproof, pretty safe. So you get them on eBay, online, old, uh, old neon sign shops. You can get them at wherever. A lot of times they can get pretty pricey, especially with old ones like this. But uh, yeah, they're they're pretty nice units actually. And if you are deciding to use one of these for um, a Tesla coil circuit. They do tend to, they, they are pretty delicate, I, I, I will say that. The, the secondaries on these, the, the wire is so thin and they're so, like, they're just designed to the point of breaking, basically, that uh, when you have your your capacitor inductor circuit, so basically uh, a, re a circuit with resonance in it, you're gonna, you're gonna get ringing and stuff, which you can overvolt these if you don't set your spark gaps right and stuff like that, so... Just keep that in mind. Keep in mind that you may, you may or may not break the transformer if you're using it for test coils. I personally don't use them for test coils because they are pretty fragile. I make my own or just use a couple mots and series under oil. They're even a lot better than these things. But for Jacob's ladders and stuff, they're great because they never overheat and they can run all day. That's what they're meant to do in a neon sign. They short it out basically. So, yeah. Have fun, stay safe, I'll see you in the next one guys, thanks.